Hello everyone, this is Terry with Futures IO, and as always, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to welcome back Al Brooks for today's webinar, Surprise Bull Breakouts and Traps. Throughout the webinar, if you have a question, please feel free to type them into the questions box, and I'll do my best to answer them at the end of the event. This webinar will be recorded and posted on the Futures.io website within 24 to 48 hours. If you're watching this afterwards on YouTube, please do us a favor and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the webinar. And as always, please feel free to share, comment, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. For trading news, events, and information, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter using at Futures.io. And now, without further delay, I'll hand it over to Al, and you'll get the pop-up to share your screen again. All right, let me... Do that. Are you able to see it, Terry? Yep. Okay, I'm going to lower uh, my speaker so you don't get feedback. All right, she's all yours. Okay. Okay. All right, let me move the screen, the go to webinar screen over. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Al Brooks, and I want to thank Terry and Big Mike for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I always enjoy talking, and I especially enjoy talking with um, the Futures IO group, because I think Terry and Mike are quality people. They do very good work. They help a lot of people. So I'm always happy to be associated with them. So I'm going to be talking about surprise bull breakouts and traps. And first, I want to begin by talking about what I mean by a bull breakout. A bull breakout is simply a bull trend bar, preferably one closing on or near its high. And a surprise bar or surprise breakout is an exceptionally big bull breakout. So you look at it and you say, wow, I was not expecting that. That's a surprise. And if you have a surprise bar, you have to be thinking that there probably will be a second leg sideways or up. It could be more, but at least a second leg up. There are minor and major bull surprises. A minor bull surprise is a medium bar big enough to create a surprise and affect the next five or 10 bars, but not the rest of the day. A major bull surprise bar is one that is so big, so dramatic that it affects the rest of the day and it may even affect the next several days. Not everything works. Sometimes you'll get a surprisingly big bull bar and instead of a bull trend, you get a reversal. So bulls get trapped into buying what they think is a bull trend. So a failed bull surprise bar is a bull trap. It's just another name for a bull trap. And then I'll finish with several examples of bull traps. In other words, bull surprise bars that reverse. First, I want to begin with what I mean by what is a bull breakout and what is a surprise bar or bars. And here we have a chart, lots of bull bars, lots of bear bars. And I have several of the bull bars highlighted, and a breakout is simply a relatively big bull trend bar. I think of every bull trend bar as a breakout, as a buy climax, <clears throat> and they often are surprises. Most of the time, they don't lead to anything. They just lead to a resumption of the trend. So surprise, a series of bull bars and then bear bars, just back and forth. But every now and then, you'll get one that is different, and instead of Continuing what the market has been doing, the market will now do something different. In this case, you get a bull trend. A bull breakout, it's a bull trend bar, preferably a relatively big bar. Sometimes it's two or three consecutive bars in the breakout. And at a minimum, I want the close of the bar to be above the high of the prior bar. Let me see if I can turn the pointer on. Let me just, I don't know. If, um, no, not allowing me to do that. So I'll just use my um, cursor right here. A breakout is an attempt by the market to do something different, to change what the market has been doing and to start a bull trend. So if you're in a bear trend and you get a bull breakout, you're trying to end the bear trend to begin a bull trend. If you're in a trading range and you get a bull breakout, you're trying to end a trading range and begin a bull trend. Trends typically begin with some kind of a breakout. So a bull trend typically begins with some kind of a breakout, some kind of a bull trend bar or series of trend bars. Sometimes the breakout's small and inconspicuous, but usually a trend begins with at least some kind of a, a bull breakout. Here we have a bear trend. I don't have the bear trend line 
drawn, but we tried to break out here, but this close is below that high. But then look at this bar. We're breaking clearly above the bear trend line and it's closing above the high of that bar. This bar is closing above the high of that bar. So it's a two bar breakout, yet it did not go very far. It's still a two bar breakout. And then up here, we have other breakouts. And then here, this bar closes above the high of this bar. So it's breaking out above this bar. It's closing above the high of this bar as well. So it's a breakout of a prior high. So that's good. And the next bar, we have a close slightly above this bar. You can call it a two bar breakout. This is more of a doji bar, a small bar. Uh, I would call this a one bar breakout and this a two bar breakout. Two decent sized bull bars. This is a bull bar and then a very small bull bar. Every tick during the day, there's both a buyer and a seller. And every tick during the day is trying to reverse what took place on the prior tick and begin an opposite trend. And every trend bar is a breakout attempt. Most trend bars fail to break out. So most trend bars up and down reverse within a bar or two. So a couple of bull bars, bear bars, bull bar, bear bar. And that's true for most trend bars on the screen. But every now and then, you'll get one that leads to a trend, a surprisingly big bar. Since most breakout attempts fail, if you get one that succeeds, it's a surprise. And there are characteristics of surprise bars, characteristics of the bars that make them likely to have at least a second leg up. Here we had a second and a third leg up. I used to call these give up bars, the bears are giving up. Now I refer to them as surprise bars. A breakout is a move above resistance. One thing, the simplest thing is the high of the prior bar. So this close is above the high of that bar. So we broke out above this point. We have a prior high here. We broke out above that high, above this high, above that high. And we have a bear channel closing above the top of the bear channel as well. So we're closing above the moving average. So there are many ways that this bar is a breakout. Plus it's a surprisingly big bar. When you get a breakout like this, at the time that you see it, you say, well, something's going on that's different, different from all of these other bull trend bars. And if it's different, that means it's a surprise. And if it's a surprise, that means a lot of traders are positioned incorrectly. The bears were selling bull bars as they were going up, betting that we would not get a trend. Bears sold this bar as well, yet it kept going up and it went up more. So the bears are trapped into a bad trade. At some point they decide it's a bad trade and they have to get out. They look for the first reversal down and they buy back their shorts and that helps create a second leg up. And there are bulls who did not buy because they don't want to buy high, they want to buy low. And those bulls wanting to buy low are no longer able to buy low, so they're trapped out. And now they look at this and say, oh, it's not a trading range anymore. I do not have to buy low, I can buy at any time. And a lot of those bulls are eager to get in. Some will wait for a pullback and they will buy the pullback. Just like the trapped bears, the bears trapped into a bad short are going to buy the first pullback. The bulls trapped out of a good long are going to buy the first pullback. So we have bulls and bears looking to buy a pullback and the result is at least one more leg up. And that is what you should expect anytime you look at the market and say, well, that's a surprise. <clears throat> if you have a bull breakout and it immediately reverses down, it's a bull trap. It's trapping bulls into thinking it's a bull trend, but instead it's reversing. This, the bears tried to get it to be a bull trap, but instead it became a bull flag. So an attempt at a failed bull breakout, the probability was that we would get at least a small second leg up, and we did. And therefore the probability was the reversal attempt on the part of the bears was going to fail, and we would get the second leg up. Had this kept going down, then instead of me calling this a bull surprise, I would have called it a bull trap. We have a two bar breakout, so you can call it a, a surprise bull breakout, a pair of surprise bars. Expect at least a second leg up. 
the, uh, the bear is trapped in to a bad short, the bull is trapped out of a good long, and both will buy the first pullback, and the result is at least a second leg up. I said there's some features about breakouts that make them likely to have follow through a second or third leg up. I want to talk about some of those characteristics. Here we have a bear channel, three legs down, call it a wedge if you want. But then we have a surprisingly big bull bar closing far above the top of the channel. It's not above the moving average, but it's far above the top of the channel. So it's different from all of the other bull bars that we've had. We've had several bull bars, several attempts at reversals, but this one is different. When you look at that, you say, oh, that's a surprise. And anytime you look at a bar and you say that's a surprise, you have to assume there will be at least a small second leg up. This meets the minimum objective, one leg up, pull back, second leg up, but it could be that this is still part of the first leg up and then this is the second leg up. It doesn't matter. When you see this, you'd expect at least a little bit more up. Maybe this, maybe that. Sometimes you get three legs up. A successful bull surprise breakout is one where there's at least a small second leg up. And there are three variables that I consider when I decide whether or not a bar is going to be a surprise bar and have um, a second leg up. First, the size of the bar and the size of the tail. So I look at the bar. This is a big bull bar compared to all of these other bull bars, plus no tail on the top. That is good for the bulls, increases the chances of follow through. And then I look at the follow through bars. Is the next bar a big bear bar? Is it a bull trap? Are we going up and immediately reversing down? Or are we gonna get a bull bar at a minimum, I want to see no bare body. So this is a perfect doji that meets the minimum. And then we got additional follow through here and here. That increases the chances of follow through up. And then next I look at context. Does it make sense to expect a change in behavior? Well, we have a spike and channel down with three pushes down. This is probably going to end up as a bare leg in a trading range, which means we're probably going to get a bull leg. Bear channels typically have bull breakouts. So the context is pretty good as well for a surprise move up, at least a couple legs up. I want to look at the size of the bar compared to the size of the recent bars. This bull bar is much bigger than all of these bull bars. Good for the bulls. I also compare the size of the bar to all of the bars on the screen. And this is the biggest bull bar on the screen. In fact, it's the biggest body on the screen, bull or bear bar. That is good for the bulls. And then finally, I want to see the bar closing on its high or near its high, which this is doing. So the bar itself has features that are consistent with a surprise bar, features that make it likely to get at least a small second leg up. <clears throat> now, whenever you have a bear trend and it's in a pretty tight channel, even if you get a strong reversal up, the first reversal up is probably going to be minor. And by minor, I mean, it's probably not going to immediately lead to a bull trend that just keeps going up and up and up. It more likely will lead to either a bear flag and you get a resumption of the bear trend or a rally that will end up as part of a trading range like here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been talking in the chat room all day, so I tend to run out of the ability to speak later in the day. So even though it's a bull surprise bar and you're expecting at least a second leg up, it's the first reversal up from a tight bear channel. It's probably going to be minor and the rally probably will be a leg in a trading range. However, it's strong enough up to expect at least a small second leg up. And here, as I said, we got three legs up. There are several things that I look at, and if they're present, I think that the odds of a successful breakout and a second leg up will be greater. As I said, I want to look at the size of the bar. Look at the size of this bar. It's many times bigger than all of these other bars. That increases the chances that it's the mark character of the market is changing. We're probably going from a trading range type price action into a trending, a trending type of price action. 
So I want a big bull bar compared to the recent bars. I want a big bull bar compared to all the bars on the screen. I want the bar to close on its high. And I want it to close far above resistance, at a minimum, far above the high of the bar before it, and preferably far above all the bars to the left, which this did. Surprisingly big bull bar, so you'd expect at least a small second leg up. Here the breakout continued for a second bar, so it's a two bar breakout. At this point, it's the third consecutive bull bar, so we're starting to get bulls owning many bars in a row. That increases the chances of high enough, uh, of, of higher prices. And then also, this bar is so surprisingly big, it's probably going to change the character of the rest of the day, not just the next five or 10 bars. So instead of simply expecting a second leg up, this has a pretty good chance of leading to a trend. In other words, dominate the entire day. So this is a major type of bull surprise. Dominate the rest of the day, not just influence the next five to 10 bars. When you get a huge bull bar like this, especially with follow through, the odds are you're not gonna be in a bear trend. You're probably going to be in a bull trend. The best the bears can probably get is a trading range. So when you get a big dominant bar or breakout like that, you expect more than a second leg up. You expect no bear trend, and then either a bull trend like this or a trading range for the rest of the day. When you have a bar that is exceptionally big like this, there's a 60 to 70% chance it will lead to some kind of a measured move up maybe a measured move based upon the height of this trading range, maybe a measured move based upon the height of the body, the open of the first bar of the breakout to the close of the final bar of the breakout. Here we have a two bar breakout. So whenever I see that, I'm always in immediately looking for a measured move from the open of the first bar to the close of the second bar, which is somewhere up here. And by the end of the day, the market got near that measured move objective. It got near the measured move objective. In this particular case, it did not quite reach it. However, when I see that, I'm expecting higher prices. Chances are a bull trend. So I'm looking to buy for any reason, especially above any bull bar closing near its high. Above this bar, buy over here. Above that bar, above this bar, any of these bars closing near their highs. Above that bar, any of these bars, expecting it to try to get up there by the end of the day. So I call that a buy the close bull trend. You can buy the close or better buy with a stop above the high of any bull bar closing on or near its high. This bull bar closing on or near its high, you'd get long, you know, uh, this bar might be above that high. Maybe it's this bar that's above that high. Bull bar closing near its high, you buy above its high. I mentioned the follow through. Here we got a surprisingly big bull bar, big tail on top, not so good for the bulls. And I wanna see the follow through. What will the next bar, the next several bars look like? At a minimum, I do not want a bare body. This was on an FOMC report. And here we tried to sell off. We retraced most of the rally. We went, we went up here, we went down here, but by the end of the bar, no bare body. So for me, that is the minimum follow through that the bulls needed to make it likely that we would get at least a small second leg up. And in fact, we got many legs up. So the follow through bar, I do, do not wanna see a bear body. I prefer to see a, a bull bar. I prefer to see a big bull bar closing near its high. I prefer to see three or four consecutive bull bars. The more bull bars closing near their highs, the more likely the market will continue higher. But this met the minimum objective of no bear bar after a bull surprise, and we did end up getting a bull trend. Normally, I like to buy above a bull bar closing on its high, but the minimum I was looking for after this bar was no bear bar. We have a pullback this high below that high, and we have the minimum needed to expect higher prices. I would buy above that bar, even though it's a doji bar and not a bull bar. It's a high one bull flag. We have a, a bull breakout and a pullback. Here we have we have a surprisingly big bull bar and we have a, a second big bull bar closing above its half, closing above its midpoint. That's good for the bulls. When you see a bear bar after a bull breakout, you're always wondering, 
is the bull breakout going to be a bull trap and will we reverse down? Or is the reversal attempt going to be a pullback, creating a bull flag and will we continue up? When I see a breakout that is that big, I'm going to assume that this is not enough to reverse that. The bull trend began down here. We sold off and then rallied from here to there. And even though that bear bar is big, it's small compared to the size of the, sell, uh, size of the rally. Plus we have a bull bar and a follow through bar. So yes, if you're long, you can get out of longs below that bear bar, but I would get long again above any bull bar closing on or near its high. So the attempt to have the bull breakout fail, failed. So it's a failed reversal and bulls would get long um, again above any bull bar closing near its high. Context, bars to the left. Okay, another FOMC report. Tomorrow is an FOMC day, so we may see a bar like that, or we may see one going down as a possibility as well. A huge bull bar, so a surprisingly big bull bar, probably so big that it will dominate the remainder of the day. A big bull bar closing near its high, much bigger than all of the other bars. So compared to all the other bars, it's an exceptionally big bull bar. It's closing not just far above this bar, it's closing far above all the bars, certainly the last 20 bars or so. And therefore, you have to assume that we're going higher. We have terrible follow through here, but the next bar did not go below the low of this bar. It went up. So I would view that as pretty good follow through. The bears wanted the reversal up to fail, and instead they were unable to trigger a sell and we kept going up. So likely to get at least a small second leg up. It's possible this is one pullback two or one pullback two or one pullback two. But at a minimum, you're expecting at least a small second leg up, which you're expecting at least that. Context, bars to the left. I want the close of this bar near the high of the bar and far above Resistance, the bear trend line, the moving average, the high of the bar immediately before, a significant high earlier in the day. And the further it closes above all of that resistance, the more likely we're going to go higher. There's an increased chance of success if it's a second reversal up. Here we tried to reverse up above that bear bar, not a very good buy signal bar. And now we're reversing up a second time. You can call it a micro double bottom with this low and that low. You can also call it a wedge, one, two, three. In any case, it's a second or third attempt to reverse up. That increases the chances of a successful reversal up. <clears throat> Anytime you have a bear trend, it's a higher probability that if you get two or more reversals up, I don't want to talk about minor and major trend reversals um, right now. Now, context also can be higher time frame price action. So, for example, this is yesterday's high. On the open, we broke above yesterday's high. Presumably, you'd expect the market to go higher. For example, if yesterday was a pullback and a bull trend, we triggered the buy signal by going above yesterday's high, we reversed down. We triggered it again here and got pretty good follow through. And then we sold off back below yesterday's high and are reversing up again. So yesterday's high was resistance. We broke above it, it was support. We broke back below it and then reversed up violently. So um, yesterday's high was support and the behavior around yesterday's high was very good. So you have a big bull surprise bar after dipping back below yesterday's high. Context is good. So that's yesterday's high. It could be also a high on the 60 minute chart, on the weekly chart, on the monthly chart. Obviously the higher the time frame chart, the less often you're going to get signals on the five minute chart. But I'm always paying attention to yesterday's high, yesterday's low. And especially at the end of the week on Friday, I paid attention to 
last week's high, last week's close, last week's low. And on the last day of the month, especially in the final hour, I also pay attention to the high of this month, the low of this month, the open of this month, the high of last month, the low of last month, the close of last month. Now, I have these pink lines in to illustrate something. And that is gaps. So we, we broke above this high right here, pulled back a little bit below that high. And then we broke above this high also, but these pullbacks, these lows, never dipped below the breakout point. And we have another breakout here, a little bit pullback below that breakout point. And then a breakout here. Every bull trend bar is a breakout. This close is above that high, so it's a breakout. And we never pulled back below the breakout point. We have another breakout here. This close above these highs. So this is an extremely strong bull trend. In fact, it's getting stronger as we're going higher. The gaps are bigger. This close, that high. Pullbacks, how deep are the pullbacks? The pullbacks are small. So you have a bull trend with small pullbacks. And how many bars do the pullbacks last? Well, here we pull back one bar, two bars, three bars. Here we pull back one, two, maybe three bars. Here we pull back one bar, right? So I would refer to this as a small pullback bull trend where you have gaps and small pullbacks and the pullbacks are usually brief. And you look at it and you think, huh, are the bears making money? selling at the high of this bar and selling more higher? No. So the bears are not making money with limit orders. And if they're not making money with limit orders, they're almost certainly not making money with stop orders. And therefore, the bears are not making money. And if the bears cannot make money, especially if the limit order bears cannot make money, in other words, if we're getting breakouts that are not pulling back below breakout points, then the bulls are buying every bar. They're betting against reversals. This is an extremely strong bull trend. Now here, I can draw a bull channel line and we're breaking above the top of a bull channel. Normally, there is only a 25% chance that if you break above the bull channel, you'll continue up in a strong bull trend. 75% chance if you break above the top of a bull channel, you'll get a reversal down at least to the bottom of the bull channel. There's one exception to this rule, and that is this kind of a trend, a small pullback bull trend. A small pullback bull trend, you can get a breakout, and instead of only a 25% chance of the bull trend continuing, it's probably more like 60 or 70%. So most of the time, if you have a bull channel and you get a bull breakout, it's going to fail within five bars, and you'll test down to the bottom of the channel. You might even get a trend reversal. But in a small pullback bull trend, you get a breakout like this, and instead of it being an exhaustive end of the trend, it's the start of an even stronger leg up. So here, instead of a bull breakout at the start of a trend, we're getting a bull breakout late in a trend, and the trend is continuing up um, very strongly. When you have a small pullback bull trend like this, it's, it's a breakout. You can say, well, Al, it's got all these bear bars and it's having pullbacks. It's not a breakout, it's a channel. Well, on this chart, it's a very tight bull channel, but I trade it like a breakout. If you look at the next higher time frame chart, it is a breakout. So if this is a five minute chart, you can look at a 15 minute chart or a 30 minute chart or a 60 minute chart, and this is what it looks like. And if you see this on a 30 minute chart, are you thinking, oh, wow, I wanna sell? Of course not, you're thinking you have to buy. You buy for any reason, but you have to buy. And if the next higher time frame chart is in a breakout like this, a series of bull bars, not much overlap, bull bars closing near their highs, no pullbacks, then on this chart, even though we're getting pullbacks, you cannot sell. So a small pullback bull trend, you're only looking to buy. And yes, it's possible this is an exhaustion gap, but it's not likely because it's a small pullback bull trend. So that's the one exception. A big bull bar late in a trend, instead of being exhaustion, you can be a measuring gap and we can get a measure move up, maybe from down here to here, and then measure move up there.
So bull trend began there. You could also try to see, check this for a measurement of up, uh, bottom of the bull trend here. Big bull trend bar closing above prior bars. So it's a breakout. Breakout of what? Well, breakout of a prior high. And therefore, as soon as you see that close, you're thinking, okay, it might be an exhaustion gap and we might reverse down or we might stop going up and enter a trading range. But it also could be a measuring gap. And I want to always look at the breakout point this high and then look for a possible start of the trend, either down here or here, and then look for a measured move up. And you can see at the end of the day, we've got to within a tick of a perfect measured move up. So um, yes, it could be an exhaustion at the end of the trend, but a surprisingly big bull bar late in a bull trend sometimes is a measuring gap leading to a measured move up. And the one time that you'd expect that is in an extremely strong bull trend, like a small pullback bull trend. It never looks strong enough. It never looks at the time that it could possibly reach up there. But a bull surprise bar in a very strong bull trend, you're probably not going to be getting an exhaustive end of the trend. It's more likely going to be a breakout and you're probably going to get another leg up. Some bull surprise bars are major and affect the rest of the day. Some are minor and only influence the next five or 10 bars. A very tight bear channel, a pretty good bull bar, but the first breakout of a tight bear channel probably is going to be minor, affecting the next five or 10 bars. This affected about 15 bars, and then it exhausted itself. Here, on the other hand, we have a huge bull bar and a huge follow through bar. So it's such a big surprise bar, it probably is going to affect the rest of the day and not just the next five or 10 bars. So if you get a surprisingly big bull bar, but in a pretty strong bear trend, it's probably a minor surprise. You'll probably get a couple legs up. Here we got three legs up, but then probably not going to get a bull trend. When you have an exceptionally big bull surprise, then the odds are better that it will dominate the price action for the remainder of the day. And you'll get a major surprise. So instead of just two or three legs up, you get a bull trend. So when I see this, I think, okay, we're probably going to get a couple legs up. I'm going to look to buy for a couple legs up, but that's it. I'm going to scalp. When I see this, I say, okay, we're probably going to get a second leg up, but we're probably going to get a bull trend. And therefore, yes, I might scalp, but I'm going to try to swing part of my position as well, because this is so dramatic, it probably will affect the remainder of the day. Now, I mentioned earlier, I'll talk about traps in a little bit, but a surprise bar is the opposite of a trap. And a trap is the opposite of a surprise bar. A trap is a surprise that instead of leading to a continuation of the trend up, it immediately reverses. Now, every big bull trend bar reversing a bear trend or breaking out above something is a surprise. And you have to constantly decide if the trend, the new trend will continue or fail. And there are certain things that I look at to help me decide. <clears throat> Here we got a pretty good bull bar outside up. We have a low one, a low two, it failed. We have a gap this close above that high, all good for the bulls. But there are things here that make me think that it's probably not the start of a bull trend. First, we're below the moving average. And it's pretty common in a bear trend to get big bull bars closing at or just below the moving average, only to have bears sell them and have the bear trend resume. We're also only about a 50% pullback of this sell-off. As big as this is, it's not big compared to what the bears did a few minutes ago. This might be big enough for a second leg up, but this might be the second leg up. So bull bar pause and then a little bit higher and that's the end of it. This on the other hand is similar in size to that, 
but the context is different. Instead of this being below the moving average in a bear trend, this is above the moving average in a bull trend. It's a surprise. The bears tried to get a reversal down. The bulls have a small double bottom. You can call it a high two, high one, high two. And here we have a bear bar and another bear bar. You're not expecting a bull breakout, yet we have the bull breakout. And when you look at that, you have to say, ah, oh, that's a surprise. And you're getting a bull surprise and a bull trend. You're probably going to get at least a small second leg up, one pullback, two. We have a, a low one sell signal, a low two sell signal, and the bulls got breakout close above that high. So a possible measure move up, except that we're in a bear trend. Big, big bear breakout, follow through, probably going to get more down. So I'm not expecting another leg up. We've already had two legs up. You know, maybe you can call this a third and then fourth, but unless we get closes above the moving average, far above the moving average, I'm going to assume this is a pullback from this. And here we have a bad high two buy setup, a high one, but three bear bars, a high two, two bear bars. You're not expecting the market to go up. You're expecting it to go sideways more, but it did go up. So that is a bull surprise and a bull trend. So you'd expect at least a small second leg up. Everything in trading can fail. And it's pretty safe to assume that no matter how good something is, it's going to do the exact opposite of what you expect 40% of the time. So the best in general you can hope for is to be right 60% of the time. I remember Alan Greenspan who was the Fed chair uh, 20 years ago. And I remember he proudly bragged one day that he was right 70% of the time. And he thought that was outstanding. And it is outstanding, except that, you know, he's, He's in control, so um, you know he. It's easy for him to be right because you know he's directly involved with the outcome, you know, by what he does with interest rates. The rest of us, in general, if you're really good, you can get right 70% of the time, even 90% of the time, if you're a really good scalper. But most of the time, it's better to assume that the market is always around 50/50. You know, maybe sometimes 40% for you, 40% against you. So I always assume that everything that I see has a probability of between 40 and 60%. And that means if you see a surprise bull breakout, you have to assume 40% of the time it's going to fail. It'll be a bull trap. <clears throat> a bull trap is a, a surprise bull breakout that reverses down instead of continues up. It traps bulls into buying high and hoping that we'll be starting a bull trend. Here we have a wedge bottom and a pretty good bull bar closing above that high, closing above the high of maybe eight or nine bars. So some bulls are looking at this saying, wow, that's a surprise. Maybe we'll get a bull trend. Ignoring the fact that we're in a tight beer channel and we're still below the moving average. <clears throat> and what happened? We reversed down. We have another bull breakout here, reversed down. These are not really um, significant bull traps because not many traders truly believed that we were going higher here or here. So not many traders are trapped into buying high. More likely the bulls who bought were looking to take quick profits and not they were not trapped. <clears throat> here we're breaking above the high of the day. Excuse me. And we tried to break above the high of the day here. We failed. We're breaking above a second time. We're failing a second time. Plus, it's the third leg up. So we have a wedge and a second reversal down from the high of the day. So this has a higher probability of reversing and therefore a higher probability of trapping bulls into buying high. <clears throat> A, a bear trap, excuse me, a bull trap, it's a failed bull surprise bar that reverses down pretty quickly, immediately or within a few bars. And there's an increased chance that a bull surprise will fail. In other words, that you'll get a bull trap 
if the bull body is not particularly big compared to the recent bars, and if it's not particularly big compared to the other bars on the screen, not just the most recent five or 10 bars. Also, there's a higher chance that it's a bull trap if it does not close near the high of the bar, like in the top third of the bar. And there's also an increased chance that the bull breakout will be a bull trap if you're in a bear trend or in a tight trading range or near the top of a trading range. That brings me to this bull trend bar. We have a pretty big bull body, the biggest one in the past 10 bars. We got a close above the moving average. We went above the sell climax high. In fact, we went above all the bars to the left. So we went above the high of the day. Good for the bulls. But look at the close. We closed not in the top third of the bar and not above these bars and certainly not above that breakout point. Increases the chances that this is a bull trap. The bulls bought up here, hoping on a successful breakout and then we immediately close down here. So the bulls who bought the breakout above that or above this or above that right now are trapped. <clears throat> and, um, and then you pay attention to the next bar. Is it a bear bar closing near its low? But first I look at the bull breakout bar itself. The biggest bar on the screen, the biggest bull body on the screen, it broke above significant resistance, all of these highs but it has an increased chance of being a trap because of that big tail on top. And then I look at the next bar. If the next bar is a bear bar, a decent sized bear bar closing near its low, it probably is a bull trap and we're probably going lower. <clears throat> so you see the big bull bar and you think, ah, it's a bull surprise. We're gonna get a second leg up. But if it immediately reverses down a bar or two later, and the reversal down is with the big bear bar closing near its low. It's a short. You sell below that big bear bar, betting that the bull breakout was a trap, trapping bulls into hoping that we're at the start of a bull trend. And in fact, we're just continuing down. In this case, it's a double top bear flag. It's a slightly higher high. So it's a slightly higher high double top, but it's still a double top bear flag with a decent sell signal bar. So you'd sell on a stop below the low of that bear bar. Now, I talked about this a few minutes ago with the small pullback bull trend, that sometimes you get a big bull breakout above the top of the small pullback bull trend, and you get an acceleration up. And here, the bull trend has lots of prominent tails. We had a pretty good sell-off earlier in the day, so we know the bears can take control. They were in control here for about eight bars or so. If I see the biggest bull bar, coming 20 or more bars in a bull trend, breaking above the top of the bull channel, and the day is not a strong small pullback bull trend, 60% chance it's an exhaustive end of the trend. End of a bull trend means either the start of a bear trend or the conversion into a trading range. So when I see a big bull bar like this, yes, it's a surprise, but it's probably going to be a bull trap. It's probably going to be a failed breakout. Yes, you might get a second leg up, but probably not much more up, and you'll probably get a reversal down at least to the bottom of the channel, maybe to the bottom of the buy climax down, down here. When you look at this, you think, eh, it's probably a bull trap instead of a successful breakout. So I'm looking to sell below a bear bar closing on its low because the bulls will get up there and bears will start selling there as well, looking for at least a test of the moving average and the buy climax low and possibly a bear trend. Big enough reversal down, it's a surprise. So this is on a higher time frame chart, a surprise down, so you'd expect at least a small second leg sideways to down. Here it was sideways. Big up, big down, usually results in big confusion. Confusion is a hallmark of a trading range, so you'd expect the market to go sideways. Here we have a bull breakout, a pair of good bull bars, but late in a trend with a lot of early selling, it's probably going to be a bull trap. We might get a small second leg up, but I'm expecting a reversal down. So look to sell below a bear bar closing on its low. 
This is a bear bar, but not closing near its low. We've got one more leg up. Here's a bear bar closing near its low. Reasonable to sell that, betting that this bull breakout is a trap. You got a second leg up, but you're not going to get much more. Increased chance of a failed bull breakout, increased chance of a, 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 bear, a bull trap if the follow through bar has a bear body, if the follow through bar has a big bear body, if you get three or more consecutive bear bodies, if you get a follow through bar closing near its low. And that's what we have here. We have a follow through bar, a bear body. We have a follow through bar, a big bear bar closing on its low. We have three consecutive bear bars, all big bodies closing on their lows. We're probably going lower. So once you see this, you're thinking it might be a bull trap. Once you're thinking this, once you see this, you're thinking it probably is a bull trap. And we'll probably get a couple legs down. Here we have a possible sell signal bar. And if the next bar trades below the low of that bar, this bar then is a sell signal bar. And this is the entry bar. Increased chance of a failed surprise bull breakout, increased chance of a bear trap if um, the entry bar has a bear body. This is a bad entry bar for the, for the bears. It has a bull body. But we ended up getting bear bars here, and that is a sign that the bulls are giving up and the bears are taking control. Three or more bear bars consecutive bear bars, three or more consecutive bear bars closing on their lows, three or more consecutive big bear bars closing on their lows, increased chance that we've begun a swing down, a bear breakout, and a surprisingly strong bear breakout, and you're probably going to get at least a small second leg down. So these bull bars, they were bull traps, one here and then a second one here, and the second one led to the end of the bull trend. Context, all of the bars to the left. Here we have five consecutive bull bars and we're accelerating up. The bodies are getting bigger and bigger. But look to the left, okay? What are the chances that this is the start of a bull trend? What are the chances that it's a bull trap and that we're not going a lot higher? I look at the close of the bars and I look to the left. Is it closing above everything to the left or is it quite a bit below a lot of stuff to the left. Here, as strong as this rally is, six of, well, seven out of eight bars have bull bodies and they're all closing near their highs. I look to the left and I say, wait a minute, this might be just a test of this sell climax high and a 50% pullback of this entire bear trend. And yes, it's a surprisingly good rally, but because of the context, it might be a bull trap. It might be trapping bulls into thinking that we're getting a bull trend, and instead it could be a bull leg, and what will end up as a big trading range. When you see a possible bull trap, and you get a bear bar closing near its low, and you're at some kind of resistance here at the top of the sell climax, you get out of longs and you sell below a bear bar closing near its low. For the bulls to have a successful breakout into a bull trend, I want closes above prior highs, major highs. We've got a close above this lower high, so we have a double bottom, a neckline, and we've got a close above the neckline, a terrible follow through, and further over, we have a major resistance area at the top of this sell climax. Some bears will have their stop above that, and the bulls could not run that stop. So, um, here we have a strong rally, but it's not breaking above all the major resistance. So increased chance that it's a trap. Also, the first reversal up in a bull trend, excuse me, the first reversal up in a bear trend, no matter how strong it is, it's typically minor, which means that it's probably either a bull leg in a trading range like this, or it's a bull leg and you could get possibly a higher low major trend reversal later. The bulls tried here, could not. They tried again here could not. But the first reversal up in a bear trend typically is going to be minor and not lead to a bull trend without first entering a trading range. Also, 
I look at higher time frame support and resistance. And if there's some major higher time frame support here and we're reversing up, we have a better chance that this surprise will lead to a bull trend. But if there's not some major support here on a higher time frame, you do not have that support. You do not have that added feature that could make this a successful bull surprise. <clears throat> I also want to see if the rally is testing major resistance. Here, we're obviously testing the top of the most recent sell climax. In this particular case, we're also testing yesterday's low. We broke below yesterday's low. We stayed below yesterday's low for a couple of hours. <clears throat> and now we're trying to reverse back above it. Is this going to be a successful move back above yesterday's low? Or is it simply a buy vacuum test of that resistance and it'll fail and reverse down? So yesterday's low support broke below it, resistance, resistance again, despite the strong rally. This was simply a pullback from this breakout below yesterday's low, and then the bear trend resumed. Common bull traps, I want to finish up here by giving some examples of common bull traps. The market's in a bear trend below the moving average like this. It's pretty common to get a strong rally, and the market can be always in long. It can be strong enough up so that you think you're in a bull trend, yet when you look at it, it's just a second leg trap. You try to get a, a first leg here, and instead of a double top air flag, we got a breakout and a second leg up, but no follow through. So instead of this having a second leg up, we just went sideways and then the bear trend resumed. So it's common in a bear trend to get a very strong rally but no second leg up. It turns out to be a bear trap. Bear bar, you sell below that bear bar. Micro double top, you sell below that bear bar. <clears throat> Here's another example. Five consecutive bull bars, four of them closing on their highs, two closes above the moving average. Look to the left, maybe a double top here, maybe a double top there, maybe simply a test of the moving average. If you get a bear bar closing on or near its low, a reasonable swell swing sell looking for a break below the neckline so double top neckline and possibly a measured move down double top in a bear trend very strong rally in a bear trend very common traps bulls into hoping it's a bull trend <clears throat> but bear trends constantly get very strong rallies and they're bull traps most of the time another example of a common type of bull trap is an exhaustion bar here we have a pair of bull bars trying to break above a parabolic wedge top. <clears throat> Excuse me. Best looking pair of bull bars late in a bull trend. We had a couple of good bull bars here, a couple of good bull bars here, but pretty strong buying pretty late in a bull trend. More likely it's going to be an exhaustion move and a bull trap instead of the start of an even stronger leg up. So especially strong bull breakout late in a bull trend often is a bull trap, a failed bull surprise. Sell below a bear bar closing near its low. So here's another example. Here yesterday, this is the start of today, this dash line. And at this point we have, I don't know what that is, 15 bars without a pullback. So a 10 or 15 bar bull micro channel, um, very strong rally, but too strong on the open and too strong when you look at yesterday. So you got to be thinking that whenever you have a strong rally on the open, you often get an abrupt reversal down and it traps bulls into believing it's going to be the start of a bull trend. So traps are common on the open. You know, today in the E-mini, there was a strong sell-off on the open, and it immediately reversed up and became the low of the day. Very common on the open to get a strong move up or down, and it immediately reverses and traps traders into um, trading in the wrong direction. <clears throat> so here, a very strong breakout, surprisingly strong breakout. But on the open, 50% chance, no matter how strong a move on the open is, it's going to reverse. So you got to be prepared for that. 
you can sell below that bear bar or you can wait for the micro double top and sell below that bear bar. This is another very common type of bull trap. You got a bear trend and you get a wedge bear flag. And instead of the bear trend resuming, you get a bull breakout above a wedge bear flag. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're still below these highs. You gotta be thinking, we're in a bear trend, you got a bear flag, wedge bear flag, and a bull breakout. It could be a bull trap. So you sell below a bear bar or a bear bar closing below its low, taking a chance that it is a bull trap. So a second leg bull trap, first leg was a wedge bear flag, second leg was a breakout. The bulls hoped it was gonna be the start of a bull trend, but we're not above all the bars to the left and we're getting bear bars. This is one final slide about traps. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. A very good bull surprise. <clears throat> Excuse me, big tail, but huge bull bar probably makes a bear trend unlikely. Now we have a huge bear trend bar, but we already know a bear trend is unlikely after a huge bull bar. After a huge bear bar, that means um, a bull trend is unlikely. So after this, probably not going to be a bear trend day. After this, probably not going to be a bull trend day. When you see that, big up, big down, big confusion, you're probably going to be in a trading range day. So we had a bull trap and a bear trap. I began by talking about bull breakouts and surprises. Every bull trend bar is a breakout, especially if it closes above something like the high of the prior bar or a prior high or a trend line on the moving average. And if the bar is unusually big, it's a surprise. And anytime you have a surprise, you're probably gonna get at least a small second leg up. And successful bull breakouts, the bigger the bull trend bar, the further it closes above resistance, the better the follow through bars, the more likely you're gonna get a, at least a small second leg up. An ordinary type of bull surprise bar is minor. It'll affect the next five or 10 bars. If you get an especially big bull surprise bar, it's major, it'll affect the remainder of the day and it might even affect the next several days. Everything that happens can fail and do the opposite. And if you have a, a surprise bull breakout, you're expecting a second leg up. If instead you get a reversal down, that surprise bull breakout is a bull trap and you gotta be looking to sell below a bear bar, expecting a reversal down. And I gave examples of several types of bull traps. I'm Al Brooks, I wanna thank you for listening. Terry, if you have questions, you can go ahead, I'm losing my voice, and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Terry, are you there? Yes, give me a second, I'm reading through the questions. Okay. Uh... What moving average was you using on those charts? I typically use a 20 bar exponential moving average, but I have friends who use all kinds of other things. I don't think it matters. Um, you just pick one moving average, put it on all your charts. Okay. Different traders, doesn't matter which one. I use the 20 bar exponential. Does the bull surprise bar apply intraday or to daily bars? If you notice on those charts, I did not have time frames or prices listed, and that's because I, I treat markets as fractal. I believe that everything that happens happens on all time frames. So I think it doesn't matter. You can see the same thing on all time frames. You know, for example, if you ever watch Fast Money, they'll put a chart up, and sometimes there'll be an intraday chart, usually a daily chart or a weekly chart, and you don't hear them say, "Oh, this is a weekly chart." And therefore, I got to trade it differently from how I trade a daily chart. They don't say that. They trade all the charts the same. And that's because all charts are simply mapping out rational human behavior. And it doesn't matter on the time frame. It's all going to be rational behavior. So um, it's the same price action on all time frames. And that's why when I'm giving presentations, I don't show 
the market, I don't show the time frame, and I don't show the price axis because it doesn't matter. I trade everything the same. Okay. Um, what do you get in after you recognize a pullback is not a reversal? Okay, sometimes that happens all the time, probably many times every day. Let's talk about the bull case. You'll get a breakout. It could be big. It could be small. At some point, you're going to get a pullback or a reversal attempt. And depending on the context, depending on the size of the breakout, you make a determination. Will the reversal attempt simply become a bull flag or will the reversal attempt succeed and lead to a trend reversal? And that goes back to what I was saying about the characteristics of a successful bull surprise bar. And the bigger the bar, the better the context, the more likely any reversal attempt will be a bull flag. And the more problems there are with the bar, the worse the context, the more likely the breakout will be a trap and you'll get a reversal down. Okay. How do you take profits on the surprise bar? Do you use a fixed point space on the range of the bar? It all depends on context. For example, if it's a rally in a bear trend, I'm expecting a minor reversal up, maybe a second leg up, and therefore I'm going to scalp. On the other hand, if it's a major surprise, it's probably going to be a swing up, and I'll either scalp part and let the rest continue until there's a credible sell signal, or I'll, I'll let all of it swing until there's a credible sell signal. Okay. Uh, just what I was asking, yes, there is a recording, and it will be sent out later once Big Mike posts it. Uh, I, we're long on time, and I know that your voice is going, so I'm going to try to pick this as a last question. Okay. What other items are considered when you see a strong bull open to determine if it will fail and possibly move into a bearish move? I, I talk a lot, a lot about that in the chat room. Immediately, anytime I see a strong move on the open, I automatically always assume 50% chance it's, it's a trap. And I look at context, you know, for example, today on the open, the E-mini sold off on the open but it was breaking below a bear channel and it tried to reverse up several times yesterday. And on the open, I, I immediately said that I thought we were gonna get a reversal up. And then we had on the third bar of the day, a very good bull bar closing on or near its high. I said it was a credible candidate for a possible low of the day. So if the context is good and the buy signal bar is good, it's a reasonable swing buy. Okay. All right. Thank you for the webinar and the information. Oh, one thing. Somebody was asking about the slides. Can you email them to me so I can put them in the thread? Is that uh, I will. Yeah. Talk to Richard. Richard okay. does handles those things. Awesome. All right. Thank you for the webinar and the information and for uh, spending some time with us this evening, Al. Okay. I appreciate the opportunity, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, everyone, for listening.